Hello everyone. An introduction to pragmatics is made simple. In this presentation, we will go through some important keywords that I usually studied within the discipline of pragmatics. Now, what is pragmatics? The position of pragmatics within linguistics. Pragmatics versus semantics. The role of pragmatics. Scope of pragmatics. Some key concepts in pragmatics. Now, first of all, let's define pragmatics. As a term, pragmatics was first coined in the 1930s by the American philosopher Charles Morris. This term was introduced on the basis of his theory of science. At that time, his theory was called semiotics. Now, in his theory, Morris distinguished three branches of semiotics. They are syntactics, uh, today it is called syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Now, in syntax, um, as a linguist, uh, we, we usually study the relation between different signs. This is according to Charles Morris. And within semantics, we study the relationship between the signs and the objects they denote. Within pragmatics, we study the relationship of signs to their interpreters, I mean, people in general. Uh, in this presentation, we uh, listed some important definitions of the term pragmatics. Uh, for example, Levinson, 1983, uh, defines pragmatics as the study of those relations between language and context that are grammaticalized or encoded in the structure of language. Such relations are very basic to language understanding. So Levinson, in his book, uh, defines this term as a kind of relation between language uh, and context. Now, this type of relation is uh, usually grammaticalized or encoded in the structure of language. I mean, the output is uh, a kind of language. Leach, in the same year, 1983, um, studied the term pragmatics in relation to the concept of meaning. And he states that meaning is studied in relation to speech, situation, this is referred to the everyday life situations where we live in. Right, Thomas, 1995, uh, defines uh, pragmatics as the study of meaning in inter interaction, um, where meaning is interpreted as not something which is inherent in the world alone, nor is it produced by the speaker alone, nor by the hero alone. So um, he focuses on the idea that uh, to understand the meaning of anything, uh, we need a kind of interaction between speakers, hearers, the relevant objects, the environment, um, and the daily uh, life situation we live in. Uh, according to Thomas, Meaning is something like a dynamic process. It involves the negotiation of meaning between speaker and hearer. According to Thomas, you cannot understand meaning unless uh, there is a kind of agreement or concord between both the speaker and the hearer. Of course, according to different uh, contexts. This is... Uh, uh, what Thomas focuses on. Now, uh, Green, 1996, um, claims that pragmatics is the study of understanding intentional human action, which must include belief, intentions, goals, plans, and so on. So uh, this means that everything related to the human um, everyday life or social life uh, should be involved in order to be able to understand the meaning of, um, of, a, of, a, of a word or of a phrase or a sentence and even larger units of speech. 
According to you, um, he defines pragmatics as either the study of speaker meaning, or sometimes he says it is the study of contextual meaning, or sometimes the study of the expression of uh, relative distance. That means um, there is a kind of difference between uh, meaning as a concept and meaning um, in, in social interaction. Uh, we will talk about the difference between semantics and pragmatics soon. Now, according to Clark, uh, of course, there are lots of definitions, lots of scholars, linguists, and pragmaticians who defined uh, this concept in different perspectives. And now, Clark, in 1996, um, defines pragmatics as the study of language use. This is in very simple words. Um, if semantics is the study of meaning, now how this meaning is used in everyday life. This is according uh, to Clark. Uh, Verschuren in 1999 um, focuses on the idea that pragmatics is actually the study of linguistic phenomena from the point of view of their usage properties and processes. This means that Cognitive, social, cultural perspectives are related to various linguistic phenomena. Um, this is related to the human behavior, actually. This is related to um, that understanding the meaning of something uh, is, uh, is something like uh, related to the cognitive side of human beings. Cruz 2000, uh, pragmatics is concerned with aspects of information conveyed through uh, language. So everything related to the human language um, is actually conveyed, is manifested through the everyday interaction between uh, people. Regarding uh, Huang 2007, uh, pragmatics is the systematic study of meaning by virtue of uh, or dependent on the use of language. So uh, we again depend on the language when we study the discipline of pragmatics. The central topic of inquiry of pragmatics include implicatures, presuppositions, speech acts, and the axes, all these are important keywords or key terms that should be studied within pragmatics. Now, if you look at the position of pragmatics in linguistics as a general or scientific uh, study of language, uh, pragmatics uh, comes uh, on top of semantics. Uh, now, phonetics is the, the study of uh, human speech sounds, the description of how speech sounds are produced, transferred, and perceived or received by uh, listeners. If phonology is the study of the systems and patterns of uh, speech sounds, then morphology is the study of uh, morphemes, words, the structure of words, word formation processes, and etc. Uh, within syntax, we usually focus on the structure of uh, phrases, sentences, the sentence types, the sentence patterns, and etc. Now, if semantics, uh, we will come to the uh, distinction between semantics and pragmatics uh, right now. But if semantics is the study of meaning of words, phrases, and sentences, then pragmatics is the study of these meanings in context or in use. Now, as a very simple distinction between uh, semantics and pragmatics here, then we have uh, another um, presentation um, where the distinction between semantics and pragmatics is, is in more details. But here, uh, let, me, uh, let me list some uh, differences between these two important disciplines within uh, linguistics. Now, semantics is usually descriptive and referential. It is actually context independent. You don't depend on the context to uh, study uh, the meaning of words, phrases, or sentences. While pragmatics is actually context dependent, 
uh, it is sometimes said that pragmatics is contextual or situational. This is one um, important difference between the two. If, if, sen if semantics is, is the study of sentence meaning or linguistic meaning, uh, we can say that pragmatics is the study of utterance or speaker meaning. Um, if, if semantics is language internal, uh, then pragmatics is language external. That means uh, semantic within semantics, meaning is an inherent property of language, but within pragmatics, meaning is realized in the course of communication in social uh, or everyday life interaction. Um, semantics is actually the language itself, or we can say that semantics is what is said. Pragmatics is the use of this language. And we can say that it is what is implied, what is implicated. If, if semantics is narrow, um, pragmatics is broad. That means what? Semantics uh, deals with only meaning in a narrow sense. Uh, pragmatics deals with aspects uh, behind the text, actually. Uh, semantics is actually regulated by some rules, while pragmatics is regulated by uh, principles. So this is a, a simple difference between the two disciplines. As you see, these two disciplines are interrelated uh, with each other. For example, just to take an example, today is Friday. Semantically, today is the weekend, actually, which is a, 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 a day that comes after Thursday, while pragmatically, that means today is holiday. Today is a break or a rest for uh, people who work hard. Uh, if you say it's a dog, that means, uh, or semantically, we refer to the dog as an entity. A dog, an object, is coming toward uh, us, Pragmatically, that means I am uh, warning a person to be aware of, uh, of a dog that is coming toward him or her. Now, what is the rule of pragmatics within all the uh, linguistic scope or within the study of languages? First of all, uh, Pragmatics uh, is actually understanding the meaning of sentences linguistically. Two, um, it offers the possibility of describing and explaining discourse facts linguistically again. Uh, three, it examines how factors such as time, place, social relations, power, solidarity, politeness, ambiguity, Anomaly, contradictions, presuppositions, etc. All these, uh, all these factors affect the ways in which language is used to perform different communicative functions in daily life. Uh, another rule is that pragmatics makes the speaker meaning easier when delivered in a context. It makes the meaning of things, uh, of utterances, easier between both the speakers and the hearer. Um, the last rule of pragmatics or significance of pragmatics, we can say that um, by pragmatics, we can avoid miscommunication caused by uh, cultural differences. As you know that there are uh, linguistic differences from one society to another, from one culture to another. The task of pragmatics is that it makes uh, these uh, types of miscommunications or misunderstanding from one culture to another uh, easier, actually. Now, in brief, we can say that to know what someone meant, we need to know three things. We need to know the forum, the content, and the use. Uh, the linguistic forum actually is very important. All these three things uh, what we mean by the forum is the grammar and syntax. The content is actually uh, the semantics of the language. The use is actually 
the pragmatics of language. Now, in order to completely understand a person, we have to know all these uh, f factors like forum, content, and use, because they are all the times interrelated. They make uh, communication more successful, actually. Now, what is the scope of pragmatics? As a contextual and communicative discipline, pragmatics has three broad divisions. One of them is called uh, micro-linguistics, uh, sorry, micro-pragmatics. Now, what we mean by micro-pragmatics is that we, we uh, study language use in small contexts. I mean, lesser units of human language. Traditionally, the context is understood as comprising the sentence and its immediate surroundings. In this regard, pragmatic studies, phenomena such as reference, the access, presuppositions, and so on. For example, take this first example. I saw you with her yesterday. So what does this uh, sentence imply when you uh, say it in front of a person? That means there is a kind of deactic reference and there is a kind of presupposition. Uh, maybe um, I saw you uh, with her because uh, you had a job with her. Maybe um, I saw you with her because uh, you had an apartment with each other. Okay. My son is clever. Uh, my son is a noun phrase. Uh, it, it, it presupposes that uh, what? I have a son. That means I have a son, right? So this is the range. This is the scoop of pragmatics or actually uh, micro pragmatics. Uh, we have another scope of pragmatics, which is uh, the macro pragmatics. Actually, it concerns with the user's intention with various ways and in a number of settings. In this regard, pragmatics studies phenomena such as speech acts and plicatures, the cooperative principle, politeness, and so on. Look at these examples so you can uh, make the difference between micro and macro pragmatics. Now, what we have here is meta pragmatics, is the study of how we know what to do in order to get what we want. Meta pragmatics is the way we achieve things via communication. This is due to the fact that people live within social and cultural relationships. This is a kind of mix between micro and macro pragmatics. The users of any language should make the principles of pragmatics true. For example, you should never tell a joke at a funeral. So what does that mean? This is a general metapragmatic analysis of some uh, specific conditions under which language uh, is used. Now, here are some key concepts uh, that are usually studied within the discipline of pragmatics. First of all, we have context. Uh, context is actually the everyday life situation. This is in simple words. We have another presentation, by the way, that uh, tackles the concept of context in more details. Uh, Diak says uh, these words and expressions are referential, so we have different types of diaxes like person, time, place, social, and discourse. Again, there is another different presentation um, about diaxes. Reference is an act in which a speaker or writer uses linguistic forms to enable a listener or reader to identify something. So we have um, anaphora, cataphora, inference, situational, and uh, so on. Presuppositions are actually the background beliefs um, related to an utterance, and the truth is taken for granted in discourse, actually. Um, there are some types of presuppositions. There is uh, 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 another a presentation about uh, presuppositions where uh, they are explained in more details. 
implicatures, um, the term implicature accounts for what a speaker can imply, suggest, or mean as distinct from what the speaker literally says. This is according to Grice, uh, 1975. Now, entailment is another uh, is another pragmatic term. It is actually the relationship that applies between two sentences, where the truth of what logically implies the truth of the other. Um, we have a different, another uh, presentation about entailment, where the types uh, examples are uh, explained in more details. Uh, another important key word or key term that is usually studied within pragmatics is the cooperative principle by Paul Grice. Uh, speech acts, as you know, they are they are, they are utterances that behave like action. As a, as a theory, it was proposed by Austin 1962 and developed by Cyril 1969, 79, and 79, okay? Communication is treated as an action, that is, humans can perform acts with the use of language. So there is a kind, there is a, there is Austin's classification and Cyril's classification, or sometimes it is called taxonomy of Cyril's. Um, they divided speech acts into uh, different types. Politeness, how to be polite in daily communication. Um, here, this term has been defined by many linguists and scholars before. One of them is Lakoff, um, who put three rules for politeness. Don't impose, give the receiver options, make the receiver feel God feel good. Brown and Levinson's model of politeness 1978. Um, he divided, um, in his theory, he divided uh, politeness into bold on record, positive politeness, negative politeness, and off record uh, strategies for politeness. Now, Leach's Politeness principle in 1983, it is sometimes abbreviated to PP. Um, according to him, there are six maxims uh, which are tact, uh, generosity, approbation, modesty, agreement, and sympathy. <clears throat> Another important um, topic that is usually studied within pragmatics is turn takings. They are manners in which orderly conversations normally takes place. Any conversation is analyzed in terms. As a model, turn taking was first coined by Sachs, uh, Shakeloff, and Jefferson in the late 1960s. There are normal terms, interruptions, silences, gazes, etc. For example, what is your favorite car? If, you, if I ask you this question and you ask me another question, what about yours? What does that mean? A question is followed by another question. The first turn has a question that is followed by another question. This is something uh, deliberately done by the hearer, actually. Thank you for listening. Have a nice time.